Hi, I'm Daz. Today I've got a Farnell power supply on the bench. It's the D32T. Uh, no output on either output, I believe, I've been told. So I'm just checking. There's nothing on the voltmeter. And I'm certainly getting no output. I'm just going to check the resistance of the diodes to short circuit. We'll see. Well, there's only 300 ohms there, so they're not short circuited. Um, so the output diodes are probably okay. Look at the fuses next. Let's have a look at these fuses. They're 20 mil. Nothing special. I don't think I've even got to meter them. They're both definitely blown. These are fast 2 amp fuse, so they need replacing first. Well, we seem to have output voltage restored with a pair of new fuses, so that's good. Why would the fuses blow? That would be my question. Um, it could be that some voltage has been put back into it. Possibly um, connected to a battery or something. That's a possibility. Could have been reversed unless I find the diodes are that the diodes are blown uh, when I look inside. But I don't think I will find that. But it's possible the current limit is not functioning properly. So if I just try and set this one. Yeah, that's a little bit intermittent that one. Let's try this one. That one's reasonably okay. Uh, one of the problems you find in these is the pots become tarnished and intermittent over the years. But uh, yeah, the current output's not too bad on this one. This one is definitely wiggling up and down. Just looking inside the unit, here's the two LED displays. They each have their own power supply and run off uh, one of the transformer secondaries. This looks like it's seen a bit of moisture. It's a bit rusty. Um, these capacitors have already been replaced, so they shouldn't be an issue. What tends to be an issue is these switches they are switching very very little current and they tend to um, tarnish over time so that the display becomes intermittent. The main control board is down here so you need to get the front off to uh, work on that I've always found. I've worked on quite a lot of these um, in a previous life I uh, ended up fixing 30-40 of them or um, trying to recondition them at least um, they're not bad made power supplies, but like I said, they've got one or two little weaknesses. Here's the uh, control boards. Obviously there's a pair of them because it's a dual output. Uh, weak points, there's a little Zener diode power supply here. And there's a 100 microfarad, if I remember correctly, capacitor associated with it. Um, and that uh, quite often uh, gets dried out because of the heat from this dropper resistor. I find that in, in the older ones as well with the analog meters that that tends to happen so but these have been replaced in this case um, also the output smoothing cap has been replaced as well interestingly this has got a 10 turn pot in and a one turn pot so someone has just made a repair using a, a normal pot I seem to remember these being multi turns so that's obviously not right to get this board out you have to undo the nuts output nuts to the output banana terminals and uh, uh, to get these boards out. And that's generally about all the things I, I tend to remember changing in these to get them going. Um, that and cleaning the switches. Um, the ones on the analog with the analog meters it's I sometimes find it particularly difficult to get the switch to respond even with contact cleaner. I rarely have I, I rarely remember changing the main smoothing on here. Um, because if you've got ripple on the output it could well be this capacitor here on the auxiliary supply rather than the main smoothing capacitors. The main ones, these ones are Sprague and they're, they're pretty well made. I wonder if there's a date code on here. Um, 
I'm not seeing one at the moment, but I know that there is one. I suspect this is the 80s, sometime like that. Here's a, a close in, you can see where the zeners have been running warm. You can see there's a lot of heat around this area. See the brownness of the circuit board. So, after all that palaver, I've actually got access to the board now, to the pots, so I need to see if I've got some in my spares box so I can get this to work. Um, but uh, I may not have. Um, often these terminals get broken as well, that's another thing that happens. People drop the power supplies onto the terminals and it busts them off. Um, so that's another little thing that sometimes needs to be corrected. In my case, my units had a modification against this dropper resistor here. Um, it's measuring about 1.2k. I've got a feeling it is actually 1.1k, but it's just parallel against this dropper resistor that drives the auxiliary circuitry. It might be that they found that the resistors that they fitted, which is different to the diagram I've got, wasn't enough. These are 470. The diagram calls for 560, so it's interesting. They must have just found they hadn't got enough drive current, perhaps because of spread of gain of transistors or something. So I'll have to replace them with something a bit more meaty. I think you can see it's well uh, toasted. On each board there's an adjustment for the maximum current and the maximum voltage. Because I've changed the pot I just need to check them, but I've checked and it I've got just over 2 amps, about 2 amps and 50 milliamps, 2050, that's fine. And the maximum voltage is 30 and a half, which is about right. Um, I've never touched the offset control, so I'm not sure of the effect of that. On the meter board, there's a calibration for the voltage reading and the current reading. Sometimes I end up twigging those. There's also a zero and a full scale for the meter itself but uh, you need to put a separate voltage in really to uh, set the full scale but the zero sometimes I had to give a bit of a twig to and that uh, usually solved the problems I had where the meter was slightly offset when there was no current or voltage flowing well I've got it all back together now and uh, I'm just going to check the current and uh, yeah that's a lot more smoother now Excellent. Good. Okay, so that's my power supply up and running again. So, uh, good stuff. Put a couple of new rubber feet on the bottom because the other two had come off. So it sits nicely now so and get ventilation underneath like it needs to. But in a linear power supply, of course, if it's on a low voltage output and high current, it's going to dissipate a lot of heat. Um, I notice a lot of the modern ones seem to uh, save that by having relays in them that switch the taps on the transformer um, so that you're not dropping quite so much voltage. But I often see these at radio rallies, and if they're not too expensive, they're worth picking up. Um, brilliant for, you know, hobbyist use on the bench is what I tend to use these for. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you found that interesting and I'll see you soon. Take care.